Uh, hi, I'm Arthur, and this is part one in a new 20-part series I am doing covering Space Marine chapters in Order of the Legions with the theme of fan favorites. Do you need to have seen the prior series to understand this one? No, but it would make me happy. A new series, boys, and with it comes a whole new batch of 20 new weird chapters to cover. I have been cooking on this one for a few weeks just so I could get a good idea of what they were about. A myriad of readings and scroungings has me good for for at least a few weeks, so I decided it's time to break out and do this. So what is this? For those of you who are new, I make a series from time to time about the various chapters and warbands of Space Marines out there in order of the Legion's numbers. There is always a theme, and this is technically season four of this. While season three is still being done behind the scenes on my paid memberships, if you want to access that, you can get access to it by becoming an Arthur Lord. The theme I wanted to go with here is fan favorites and fan submissions. So, if someone specifically asked me for a chapter, they are probably going to show up in this series at some point. And if not, they're chapters that a lot of people like. So I'm going to be discussing individual chapters and their lore throughout the entirety of these videos. So this is part one, meeting Dark Angels. So. What are we covering? The Star Phantoms. So if you know me, I tend to get around and make a lot of friends. So I've made a decent amount in the past year of me doing the YouTube thing, so it goes without saying, I meet some fun characters. There is a lovely artist I met a while back by the name of Meaty, and they are obsessed with the Star Phantoms. Like, so obsessed, they made their own mock Old Hammer style 40k codex cover for them, and it was unironically badass as hell. Which, by the way, this is the art for that codex here that they made. And yes, I got permission to use it. Since they have been a stalwart member of the community and relatively active in the Discord server, which, by the way, we have a public Discord, link in the description, but since they have been active, I decided it was time for me to kind of give back to the community and cover the Star Phantoms because the Star Phantoms are interesting. So, who are the Star Phantoms? They are an unknown successor of the Sentinel Founding which is a bunch of chapters dedicated to hunting down random Xenos that require hunting down and can't be left alone for too long. Which is weird because you'd think chapters like the Iron Lords would come from there if you know their lore, but apparently they don't, so whatever, but I digress. They are a pretty standout chapter as they tend to have a pale white set of power armor with black markings to denote squads and companies and so on and so forth, though they often adorn many, many, many different decorations that have something to do with death and dying, such as skull face paint on the visors and bones across the entirety of the armor. That is kind of the core element that attracted me to this chapter. They are very somber and have a very depressed outlook, which I think is very interesting in comparison to other chapters of Space Marines. Like many chapters crave glory, many other chapters crave to test out their own skills. The rest seem to just do it out of a sense of holy purpose and holy duty to the impairment of mankind, but the way that the Star Phantoms are described is often, in my interpretation, radically different from the motivation of the majority of Space Marine chapters out there. It's like they feel they have to do what they do or something bad will happen. It's this grim resignation to the fact that they have to do what they need to do. It's almost a, a fatalistic kind of view that they worship death and see the themselves as the divine messengers of the Emperor to usher people to the graves, and if they don't do it, no one else will. It comes off almost as if they view it like a job. Like it's something that they have to do, and they don't necessarily take it with any joy, but they do it so they can get said job done. It's very interesting, but it does reflect their history a lot. The Star Phantoms have such an interesting history too. To cover it in the broad strokes, their original home was beset upon by orcs for a long ass time, and in most cases, a fortress monastery beset upon by orcs tends to not last all too long, I will add, but in this case, it wasn't the orcs that caused all the trouble. It was actually the things the orcs were running from. As you can tell by the fact I just used the sentence orcs were running from, it was probably something bad. And whoopsie poopsie, guess what's behind curtain number one? It's the Hrud. Yay! Like a tide of oops all dead, the Hrud showed up in a massive migration and did what they usually do which is migrate through an area and kill everything. 
You gotta remember that in the 40k universe, one of the number one things you do not mess with in terms of like alien species is the HRUD, especially a HRUD migration. So for those who don't know much about the HRUD, as they are a bit of an obscure race that only pops up from time to time, is that they have this ability that if you get within a certain range of them to speed up time, they can also reverse time or slow down time, but it's much more common for them to just speed it up. They do so and if they're in massive quantities, like in a migration, they can speed up time so much so that they will age you and everything around you into dust. Inevitably, a chapter of a thousand space marines, the Star Phantoms couldn't do what a legion of space marines, the Iron Warriors tried to do a long time ago with even better equipment. Shocker. And couldn't stem the HRUD migration whatsoever, and they just sort of left their planet to its death, with a few complications along the way because some of the chapter decided to stay and die on their planet while some left. It does end up contributing to their grim demeanor though, this idea that death is the most important facet to their lives. They are creatures born of death and are here to deal in just that. They were a fleet-based chapter for a while after that and ended up popping up in the lore in another unexpected place, and are responsible for one of the more interesting events in 40k history. You know the Bad Ab War? Yeah, they played a pretty key role in the end point of that specific war. Like, I'm not kidding, the reason Huron Blackheart is missing most of his body is because he was hit by a melta bomb thrown by a star phantom which is kind of weird because huron is one of the more if not one of the most important characters in the setting right now but the star phantoms are not usually really brought up at all. Well, after almost killing the tyrant of Badab and being the key to almost winning the entire damn war, they ended up being gifted a new planet in the Badab sector to choose as their fortress monastery since their last planet was aged to a ball of sand. They got a new planet and now they just sort of exist. And that is kind of an incredibly condensed view of their lore. But it is important to know to discuss the next thing that I want to talk about, which is their origins and tactics, as honestly, I think that's slightly more interesting than their rather sordid history. So what do I mean by origins and tactics? Well, it is alleged that they are Dark Angel's successors, because they have very similar personalities as a Dark Angel's successor. They are stoic, they are solemn, they are very calm, they have an obsession with secrecy and keeping to themselves, and they're also very obsessed with single-minded task completion. But it is actually contested by the Dark Angels themselves that they are in fact Dark Angel stock. The Star Phantoms also always seem vaguely offended when someone mentions that they are Dark Angels adjacent, which I think is interesting. I personally think the Star Phantoms are in fact a partly Dark Angels, as the symbolism with death and so on is very on par with their successors, but also their combat tactics are on par with a long forgotten wing of the Dark Angels, Hexagrammaton. See, right now we only really talk about the three wings, which is the Green Wing, the Death Wing, and the Raven Wing, but we still have a bunch of other wings to discuss, and the one that I think is most closely associated with the Star Phantoms is the Dread Wing. See, the Dread Wing did not fight with the idea of taking prisoners or leaving survivors. They did the worst shit with the heaviest weapons possible in order to get the job done. Jump pack destroyers, rad missiles, and Volkite were the name of the game with this entire sub-wing of the Dark Angels. Now, the Star Phantoms don't necessarily have access to these kinds of tech, but they do have access to multi-meltas, plasma cannons, heavy bolters, heavy flamers, the heaviest of man-portable weapons, which they use in abundance. As they don't really have any compunction to leaving a planet a smoldering wreck of what it used to be, their grim determination is able to push them past some of the worst threats out there, but it also leads them to be a very singular chapter, not often mingling with other chapters in their ranks or even in their area, which definitely has led to people not knowing much about them. It leads them to being a bit more obsessed with their fellow battle brothers inside the chapter, and here's where it gets 
a little funky because of that. Due to their almost spiritual beliefs of the Emperor, they tend to keep a lot of reliquaries. Little artifacts that contain the bones of fallen enemies and allies alike. The dried ash of ground up bone dust used for lapping powder that was once a fallen enemy that they saw as deserving. The bones of a battle brother, the skull of a battle brother used to remind them that they were good in combat. They actually respect the dead and the way that they died more than they respect living battle brothers, which I think is very interesting. It ends up with them having an almost mortifactor's adjacent look, but without the cannibalism tried afterwards, if you catch my drift. I think the idea of these fellas dropping in with heavy weapons and gunning down absolutely everything is such a cool aesthetic and it's honestly a shame that they don't get as much credit as other factions that took place in the Bad Ab War like the Carcharodons, the Minotaurs, the Mantis Warriors and so on and so forth. I'm always a proponent of obscure chapters but these guys aren't even the worst I've looked at or even covered. The Marauders have a single paragraph of lore and I still somehow found a way to stretch that to nine minutes. That might just be me trying to justify covering a chapter that a friend asked for. So, what do you think about the Star Phantom? I think they are a cool carry-on from the Hexagrammaton and have a fun aesthetic, but I'm also a sucker for bones, so you could probably see where my biases are there. So remember to like and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel. Special thanks to my channel members for supporting me, and if you want to support me as well as gain access to additional content, then become a channel member today. If you want to support me more directly, then buy a shirt. They are pretty cool, and bet you don't got a shirt like this one. Regardless, thanks again for watching. And yes, I am going to cover the Lamenters. Stop asking.